welcome our guests who I pray become our family again. Welcome to you, family, on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us, and please make it a point to come and visit us as well. We are going to get started with announcements. Do not forget about the men's meeting. It'll be April 26th and the 27th. That's a Friday night and Saturday morning. No cost or admission, so please, gentlemen, invite all of the men of God you know and those who are not men of God and bring them anyway and tell them to come on down and start living their lives right. <laughs> Don't play no games. Y'all men, y'all can talk to each other. <laughs> Let's prepare our tithes and offerings to return to the Lord. You can go to fioministries.org under I support, or if you need an envelope, just raise your hand and one will be passed to you. And let's stand to our feet and prepare to water our seed. To, yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. Water our seed. So as we sow today's offering, we are You're believing the Lord, Lord for... Give us some surprises, find new money, debts paid off, checks in the mail, expenses decrease, blessing and increase, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebate and returns. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give unto the gospel of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! And keep it going as we welcome our wonderful pastor down. Please give him a round of applause. We are so blessed to have a teacher and someone who will love us, correct us, and guide us in our life. So let's give him a big round of applause and show us you guys may all be seated in the presence of the Lord. I hope you felt the presence of the Lord during the praise and worship. For you, that's one of the ways, the weapons of our warfare, that we need to learn to actually, like I said, you got to practice the presence of God. It don't come automatic. You have to learn to practice. You need to figure out what gets me there, what doesn't. That's why most of the time we turn the lights down. A lot of people get distracted. They like to see. And here, you know, since we do ours on the big screen, we don't have... Musicians, nothing against that. You know, we listen to musicians over here. We don't have to worry about seeing who, what they're wearing, and all that dancing generation. You can close your eyes and just focus on the Lord, which it should be anyway. It's very distracting. Uh, worship is also mostly you supposed to, what the Bible says about worship and praise, you're supposed to bring one. Yeah. Yes. See, we're not supposed to be pumping you up. Lift your hands. No, you're supposed to bring your hands. You're supposed to bring the lift. You're supposed to bring the praise. If we kind of pump you up, it means you're not doing nothing at home. Same stuff. So then you're supposed to bring that because worship is an offering. And every time you step to the temple, you always bring an offering. It might be monetary. It might be. And he would tell you, he says, bring a sacrificial praise. You know what? That's when you had that hard day of work. And you don't feel like doing that. You had a rough day. He says, bring that and I can do something with it. You always put it in the king's hand and he's going to do something better than you can do with it. So make sure you remember that when you're doing praise and worship, it's not so much for people like, oh, make me feel something like, no, you're supposed to bring it. <laughs> you know, you bring it to the house and God says, if you bring it, I'll multiply it and I'll reward you. So that's the way worship works. Worship is it's not as easy as you think because there's so many distractions because Satan wants to keep you from worship. Pride, I ain't going to clap, I ain't going to move. Ain't, that's Satan. That's nothing got God. Clap your hands, all your people shout with a joy. You know, it took me years to figure out what was going on. It's all an attack. Because he's going to go get your weapons. Just like I said, Batman with his utility belt, he wanted to disarm Batman. He wanted to take that belt and just throw it to the side and say, now nah, I'm going to take you out. That's part of your weapons of your warfare, guys. So I'm telling you, use every tool. That's why when I do this series on all things being equal, you're going to see how I bring out and show you. Let me show you what happens when you don't do it. And then you get to see, like, wow, it's not an option anymore, is it? Well, when God talks to us, he never talks in the word of God like it's an option. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the great suggestions. It is a commandment from your father. And he's doing it for you. He said, I don't need none of it. It's for you. So praise God. Welcome visitors. Thanks for coming out tonight. Hope you get uh, what we normally get every Wednesday. God used to show up and show out for us for some reason because he loves us. That's the reason, right? Because he loves me. God, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God loves us. I mean, he really does. 
God took 11 people and changed the whole world. How much more? You know, because he's never in the masses. You know, Jesus had to swell, then he reduced it down to his three, his intimacy. So you want to get more intimate, you have to get smaller sometimes. But praise God, we're down for whatever God wants us to do. I have to remind you every time I come here, I'll, I'll show you from big picture to detail when I teach. Because that's the way God does things. He gives you a big dream, and then he'll give you no details, and then he works out through the details. But that's where I teach you guys. I always show you the big picture of detail. I give you that carrot. Hey, don't forget what we're talking about here, because I want to get you down into the lesson, and then you forget how does this fit in the big picture of things. Well, I always put you in the big picture of things to remind you. First of all, we must remember that our God, which is the title, is a king. Most people don't know that until Christmas. Or, <laughs> you know, that's when they start talking about kings. But they don't know that our God is actually a king. And they really don't have no use for a king because they don't know the next part is that if he's a king, he also has a kingdom. All right? A king always has a kingdom. So right here we have the kingdom of God, and Satan has a kingdom also called the kingdom of darkness. Of course, as you can see, our model shows that God's kingdom is way bigger than Satan's kingdom. These, these little pyramids down here actually look like Egypt because we always refer to the Old Testament as Egypt being a type of the world or the world system. Well, this is our world system that we get up to every day. We call this the valley of the shadow of what? Death. God says, he wrote in the psalm, just wrote, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead? I will feel no evil for thou art with me. I mean, this is what you wake up in every day. See, when you know the game and the game pieces and the game players and the rules of the game, you can do this thing. Yes. This is why I like making it plain before you can understand. And all you get, it makes you what? Get you get to understand. You're going to talk to me tonight. Um, so, therefore, the verses is not so much that, oh, it's really a big story. No, we can dominate. The only reason he beat us or beat some individuals because they don't even know that exists. That's where I was for 20 years. I, I, I believed in Jesus. I was stuck right here on this religion mountain. And I just believed in Jesus, and I operate in this system right here. And Satan is the boss, ruler, force, demonic activity, all behind the system. So that's when somebody saw so tell you, hey, you, this coming man, you don't understand. If you don't, get, if you don't backbite, cheat, lie, steal, you can't get ahead in this system. And you know what? They was absolutely right. And that says you can't, because who rules it? Satan is the ruler of this world system. He's in the world. It means it's a system. That's what it is. It's a system. So therefore, we don't use that system. But thank God, He told me I had another one. How do we get it? Watch this. Colossians tells us one thirteen says, "For He has rescued us from that system and transferred it to another system." Praise God! Isn't that awesome? We don't have to worry about that system now because He has put us in a whole new system. And I have to keep reminding you that because you're not going to hear that too much when you leave here. All right? But I want you to take it with you. I want you to meditate it. I want you to get in this system. Like when I go on this dark world system, I'm not using this stuff. They're going to tell you we're not hiring anymore. And, and the sales are down. The sales are up. Or, you know, who's in the office? Who's not in the office? you got to remind yourself that has absolutely nothing to do with me. Because I'm in a whole new system. See, once God made me study Jesus for two years, that's what I figured out. Like, why is he so confident? The Romans are ruling all over him. The Romans are telling them you can have church in your house and in your home only. And it didn't stop him at all. And I realized why. Because when I studied Jesus, he always talked about another system called the kingdom of God. So it takes, so I want us to learn that we are a part of another system. And we have to learn it because I took 20 years and I, I take my time with this all the time with you guys because I'm telling you guys, I was in church for 20 years and never knew about the kingdom of God. I knew about Christianity. Christianity is basically just that Jesus died for you on the cross. One day he's going to come and you get out of here and you go to heaven one day. But that ain't going to help you when you get up and you walk into the valley of the shell of death every day. With sickness and disease trying to take your kids out, your body. When you, you can't get a job, your boss is on you, you're laying off. That ain't going to help you. And it was not designed to. You think our father, who has his kids, we are his kids, is going to leave us down here and let his neighbor beat us up? God is not going to abuse his kids, and he's not going to let his neighbor do it either. Amen? Amen? So therefore, he gave us another system that we have to learn to operate in while we're down here. Matter of fact, in John, Jesus, in, in John, uh, 
Jesus said, well, you good think like, because that's what I taught me Christianity. One day man's going to get better. We might suffer now, but one day he's going to get us out of here. And I'm like, why are they saying that? Because I read John. Jesus says, and Father, do not take, take them, them out of here. Leave them right here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, like, so, and he used to tell my own one day pie in the sky. No, God says leave them here because he knew they got another sister. It don't matter what that does. The kingdom of darkness cannot be the kingdom of light. But if you hang out here on this religious mountain, oh, he's going to tear you up. No religion can take on the kingdom. Not one religion on this planet, Baha, Buddhist, Muslim, done, cannot hang with the kingdom of darkness. He's manipulating all of them, putting them in the same boat, and they try to put us in the same boat. And God keeps telling you every time I read the word, uh, you're not like them. Don't you know? Your heaven, your home is in heaven. You're a peculiar people. You're strangers from a foreign land. You're for, he, he's not going to let you be there. That's why I meditate on the word. Because I'm never here. I'm not here. I'm what you're talking about. No matter what they say, I can't get God to agree with nothing they say about me, my life, my future, my everything. Nothing. I can't find nothing. He won't even say, you, yeah, every once in a while, you're going to dip down here and you might know. Can't find it. So therefore, we realize how blessed we are. This is why Jesus, the only thing he talked about was the kingdom of God. Look here. In John 17, 6, it says, they are not of this world. Even as I am not of this, I'm just like Jesus. He said, hey, y'all just like me. I'm not of this world. You're not of, you're not of this world since it's called cosmos. That's an organized, systematic system that they use down here. And God calls it world. He didn't call it earth. World means the systems of the earth. Satan is the ruler of the systems on the earth. But he don't rule the earth. God's telling you now, you actually going to rule everything. Everywhere you tread your foot, you're going to start controlling because you're going to take the kingdom of God with you now. And you're going to start releasing that everywhere you go. So when you learn that, amen? All right, so that's, that, you know, that's the big picture. Don't forget our Father, our Father, have to be God. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. How many people going to say, hey, my Father's God? <laughs> you know, you go home and break school and brag about that. Hey, my, my father's God. <laughs> What's your Isaiah 46, 46 says this. It says, remember the things I have done in the past. Here's God talking through Isaiah. For I alone am God. Uh-oh. I alone. I am God. And there is, like this, none like me. There's none like our father. There's nobody, nothing it ever existed that's like him. He says, no, he said, now remember the things that did in the past. Watch this, verse 10. Watch this. Here's what's so different about you. How are you like the other gods? I'm the only one that can declare the end from the beginning. I am the only one who can go over in the future, finish everything up, ran back over here, and hit the start button. <laughs> that's who I am. This is why we worship. You are worthy of it all. Because that's who he is. Watch this. Uh, ancient time, he says, saying, my purpose will be established. This is why I tell guys, pay attention to what the Father wants. That's why Romans said, you tell you to renew your mind with the word of God that you may know what the perfect will of the Father. That's the only reason you study your Bible. You're not trying to sit there. I'm just reading the Bible. It's a history book. Or I'm just reading the Bible and pressing the Bible about some verses. No, you're trying to find out what does the Father want me to do because that's the only thing he's going to do. That's what you want to study the word for. All right? My purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. God says, I will. Not might. I will accomplish. See, people are like, well, how can God? Because God dealing with man who has a free will they flawed, and sometimes they feel like they're not, sometimes they don't. So how God know that he's going to fulfill his will? Well, the thing is about God is God says, I got some set plans and seasons and times, and I'm going to make some stuff happen in the earth. I let my, I invite my children to get involved with the family business and say they can get blessed because I'm going to reward those who diligently seek me and those who actually do my good works who help me along with this thing that I'm going to do. Whether they do it or not, I'm going to make sure it get done. Is that not what happened to Moses? Moses, go and lay down. Joshua, come on. Like I said, my will will be done on this earth. Well, that's the way the Father does it. Most people think, well, you can't stop God. God says, I already know. So everything in this Bible, the 66th book, book of books, he says, I'm going to bring it back. Now, you can join in or you can get left out. All right? But he says, but my purpose, what he says right there, 
my purpose will be established and I will <laughs> accomplish all my good pleasure. So this is why I study the word of God. You get a whole new meaning why you study the word of God. You should study the word of God. Why? See, you don't know why you get bored. Because I need to find out what God's going to do. You know, what God has already done. Because he already told you, I'm God like no other. I'll show you the end from the what. Yeah. So I need to go find out what he did in the past. Mm -hmm. What he's talking about doing in the future. Before I can get involved in my time period. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got to learn this stuff. God is good. Watch this. And many are the plans in a person's heart. Now, you know, we've been making up some stuff. <laughs> you know, we got some big plans. <laughs> you know. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So why does God tell us this? Like, well, hold up now. You know, <laughs> you know, you come up with a lot of ideas. You know, you talk to especially young, you're going to do this. Everything I do, I come up with is tentative and subject to change. I tell you that all the time. I don't, I don't play around with that. Because have you noticed, like, for instance, me and my wife, we went to school for different all type of degrees. We got all kinds of degrees, right? And presently, we're not doing none of them. <laughs> you know, not seeing people who do that. They go to college and they get a degree. And then why not do another? Because they wind up because God got a different assignment for them. Mm -hmm. So many of the plans of man, but there's a lot of purpose that prevails. So you need to get with the Lord early and stop wasting time. That's why he says, make sure that your, your calling and your election is sure. If you find out your purpose early, you won't waste a lot of time or money when you do that. Cause, and don't get me wrong, everybody, I, I, when we say calling, because when I grew up in the religious mountain, all they knew about calling was they think it's called in the church to help, you know, uh, should have seen the choir. No, you got to call it out there in the world. God says, lead them in the world system because I need some people with the light of kingdom in that dark system. I want you to go out there and get your engineer degrees, all that kind of stuff, and make it happen. Don't be running around to no church building. Jesus got to think, we leaving here. I'm going to tear this one down in 70 AD, and then we ain't going to be on no more, and you're going to be out there in the system with the kingdom of light working and working and working. It. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, God's not into a building project. He says the best one, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy He that's the only thing he cares about. He's telling you this night, he start telling you, take care of your body, make sure you do this. Who who destroys the body, him I will destroy. He's talking about you. The man, ain't, there ain't no Holy Spirit hanging out here when we leave. It's only here because we brought it here. And when we leave, it leaves. <laughs> All right. There ain't no tabernacles no more. It's not a church. I don't care how the marble floors. Saying there ain't no presence of God there until you bring it there. Mm -hmm. See, so God's not into that stuff. The building project. He's been down with that stuff. He says, I will no longer. I'm not going with my spirit. I'm not going to dwell in brick and mortar. You know, he got to get it back to where it used to be. It used to be in the first Adam, and now we are the offspring of Adam. He got it right back, and that's what the whole resurrection Sunday was supposed to be about. And you know, he brought it back. He made it accessible to you can be now the tabernacle of God again. Praise God. That's the true resurrection. Praise God. Watch this. There's only two operations. When God looks at stuff, his stuff is real simple, so that's why I talk simplicity. Make it plain, think around with it. When God looks at the world, he looks at two systems. This is the kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. All the denominations, churches, and all the stuff they've been arguing about, God's not involved at all. He just sits there and looks at them. You know, unless they speak a kingdom word or something like that, you might get his ear. But all those religious stuff, God's not into it. You have two kingdoms, and that's all he cares about. That's why Jesus only talked about the kingdom of God. His only message, his only prayers, you know, uh, every parable. That's all he talks about is the kingdom of God. Because that's the only thing that's on this earth actually working. Now, in those systems, they try to make a religion. Not God. God has no religion now. None. Now, watch the kingdom of God operates by... All right? And the kingdom of darkness operate by fear. Kingdom of God operates by righteousness. That's something that most people don't understand. Righteousness. That's what God says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else is going to be added to you. Most people don't understand righteousness. We'll see that later on. You know, that's why I did a whole series on righteousness. Um, the kingdom of God operates on what? Self-will. Do as thou wilt. You ever heard that before? That's where they get that from. Do as thou wilt. The king also operates by what? Love. love. And faith working by love. love. See? That's why you always have love. Um, the kingdom of darkness operates by lust, which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. 
See, and that Jesus was down here telling you, he says, all that's in the world or in the world system or in the dark kingdom system is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. He said, that's all that's in there. And then you can spread out, start breaking each one of them down if you want, and then you're going to fall in those categories. He says, but he keeps his stuff simple. And the kingdom is very structured. It's like military. That's why I got it so quickly. I'm like, man, I get it. It's all structured. And you can see it. When I, was in, when I was just being religious, I was confused. You tell me one day we over here, we doing this. And one day we over here. Now, anytime I'm in the visible church, I'm talking about just the different beliefs from year to year to year. Now we believe in this. And now we don't believe in that. Now, ever since I became a kingdom man, ain't nothing changed. Kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. <laughs> you know, and I just roll with it and I can move. Right? Like, just like military. That's why we're so efficient. Because everything was structured. I said, I get it now. But religion, Satan is the author of confusion, and he designed religion to make you confused. You can't remove in that stuff. Watch this. The kingdom of God works by discernment. Discernment. See, so this is where you got. To, this is where you just sense stuff. Uh, matter of fact, you did it, and it was mental. That's where uh, Adam operated in the garden. He just uh, in in the spirit realm, which was always connected to the spirit. In the spirit realm, God, you hear? We always say this. One of the attributes of the father says, my father knows my thoughts are far. That's discernment. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> that's the way they operate in the spirit realm. You know, and, and God's trying to get you back to using your discernment. That way you, when you, even though you see stuff and hear stuff and somebody's saying something and stuff going around, he's going to say, now tap into the spirit. And it's going to be like the matrix. And you're going to use discernment to make your decision. All right? Not know what they say, what you heard, what you just looked at. That's why you got to... That's why he wants you to pick up that cross. Like I told you, get you two if you got a real bad flesh. Pick up that cross. <laughs> and, and because the dead man cannot respond or, or be involved in your decision making. Because that would throw you off. You do it because you got some, as they say, uh, insider trading information. You don't want to do that. That's a flesh thing. What did your spirit say? I, I told you, I can't get my, can't get somebody working my t-shirt with me now. What, what the words say? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's all we're going to be doing right here, you know. Uh, the kingdom of darkness uses human reason. This is why people, are, and that's the same thing that, you know, Dallin Thomas, unless I can see, smell it, taste it, whatever, you know, and it, that don't make no sense. And seeing our world, it's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to make what? Make faith. There you go. You got to make faith. We ain't trying to make sense of everything. We're just trying to make sure there's faith involved. Because when faith is involved, the force of faith is going to move something. All right, so we're not talking about the human reason, and that's what they do. They're trying to figure it all out, mathematical equation. You can't do that with God. He's bigger than you. He gave you math. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so put your little reason down. Well, watch this. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. See, when I used to hear the word righteousness, people are saying, well, he just don't know that his righteousness is of, of, his righteousness of Christ. And, and Christ died for us of faith, lest no man should boast, and that's what it's all about. Well, here this guy saying, you're unskillful. You know, like, so righteousness is more than just your state. See, they talk, every time you talk righteousness, they say, well, we're going to lean on the state of me. Like, of course, you're a kingdom citizen, and you're good to go. That's your state. But what is your standing? If you're an American citizen, you got a ticket, you ain't pay it. You're still an American citizen, but what's your standing as a, you got a warrant out for your arrest. See, that's going to be your standing. So that's what God means by, if any man, you know, um, uh, sin, he has an advocate with the Father, let him ask for forgiveness. In other words, go and pay your ticket. All right, so ask for forgiveness, and he's faithful and just to help you pay your ticket and cleanse you and bring you back into the right standing and state with the country that you live in. All right, so that's what forgiveness is. That's why God put that forgiveness thing. He says, every once in a while, you guys going to have to probably pay a ticket. And I want you to do it. And your ticket look like this. Uh, you and your brother been arguing. Go and apologize first. I already got a state. I'm still America. I'm still a kingdom citizen. But my standing with the Lord is like, ah, <laughs> do not come back over and talk to me. What I tell you, go over there and talk to them first and then come back to me. All right? See, that, that changes your standing. That's the pure heart. And the reason why I'm talking about this, see, they never put emphasis on that because they're too worried about your state. You're still a citizen. Just like Americans say, who wants to bomb on the street? American says, ain't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? I told you last week, everything in the kingdom works. Everybody work. My father work, and I work. Jesus let you know this is what we do. <laughs> you know? So everybody's working. So nobody wants, so they just let you be lazy in the spirit realm of the kingdom of heaven tell you, hey, you're good to go. Jesus, by his grace, you're already saved. 
But God says, no, but I want your standing to be just as good as your state. Mm -hmm. That's why he comes back later on and says, now, if any man come out to me, let him be a productive citizen. Let him pick up his cross. You know, let him, you know, come and follow me. You know, he's trying to get you to activate yourself. Uh, so we got to watch that. So don't fall for that religious rut. That's how they get you. Because Satan, remember, Satan is not religion. And religions, all religions have zero power. When they pray, they don't expect. If you do, cool. If you don't, cool. Jesus never taught that. He says, when you pray, believe. You're going to receive. He's expecting you expectation to always be there. And, you know, and keep you, and he's telling you, hey, make sure you keep your tickets paid or keep yourself clean, you know, for your for your prayers to constantly be working. Because constantly what? Working. See? But in other religions, oh no. Every religion prays. Everybody prays. But everybody don't expect anything. See? And that's what the disciples came to Jesus. Said, Jesus, teach us to pray. In other words, you think the Jewish guys never prayed before? They were saying to Jesus, teach us how to get results mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do the foolish stuff they taught me when I was a religious mountain. Oh, don't you know it's just talking to God? Mm -hmm. He didn't never say nothing like that. He said, oh, come on here, let me show you. Now, when you pray, remember that who you're praying to is not on this earth. Our Father, who is in the kingdom of heaven. For us, we say the kingdom of heaven. We don't just say heaven because we understand that he's a king. All right? He's in a whole different country called the kingdom of heaven. It's invisible, but it's big, it's vast, but it's still another country. And he says, pray to him. Tell him that you bring the kingdom of God down into your situation. Because once you bring the kingdom of God down to your situation, your situation is going to change. That's how you know your prayers will work. Now, if you're not praying that down, don't expect anything. That's why I watched Jesus. That's what all he did. He prayed stuff down. In those storehouses. So I was telling you about don't store up your treasure on earth, but make sure you store everything up in the invisible realm of those storehouses right there. He says, I'm going to give you some keys. You can go in any storehouse you want and get anything you want when you need it. That's the way he operated. And that's why I've been so excited since I learned the system. I don't worry no more. I understand how all of it works. I say, I ain't got all of it down, but I got enough down to get me rolling. I say, I'm good now. I ain't, no more religion for me. I said, y'all can have it. No, I pass. And I said, hard pass on religion. Because <laughs> I ain't got time for it. I was feeling big time. Now, we are here, and we, we believe in this top three for FIO ministry from inside out. We're changing and transforming you from inside out because we're going to teach you what, duh. Right. And we're going to teach you the truth. Right. And we're going to teach you what? Right. We're going to find out what's Jesus' way. What is his truth? We know it's from the word of God. And what is the type of life that he wants us to live on this earth? See, a lot of people decide that, hey, we don't know what kind of life it is. So we're like, hey, just wait about it. Worry about it when you get to heaven one day. No, I came that you might have life and have a more abundant win. Now, because everything he does is now faith. Now, faith is now the God of the now. All right. So we're doing our series on the kingdom comes in power. And demonstration and we're bringing out the power Paul talks about this about after what happened after the resurrection that I might know him in the power of the resurrection well after the resurrection let's read what happened right after the resurrection we just got you watching this throughout every TV show every church is on it you know we got rid of the Easter eggs and bunny because we know better because I seen y'all the video loop y'all know better to fool around with that demonic stuff uh, it's, it's just horrible that we know what really goes on with that. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, whooping poles, uh, beatings, beard yanked out, you know, the seven different spots he, he sprinkled his blood, that's his suffering. Um, that's what they call the passion. The passion of Christ is called the suffering of Christ. And he died, and he appeared to the apostles from time to time. He's just coming in and out of their life, right? And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. He proved to them. He said, I'm alive, guys. I'm not no ghost. And he talked to them about the what? What did he talk to them about? The kingdom of what? God. You know what? And, and I was on a religious mouth. And if somebody came back from the day dead, what would you think they'd be talking about? They'd be talking about how I was and down in, in the graveside and what it was and just like this. He came up. He went down talking about the kingdom of God. <laughs> you know, he rose up and started talking about what? Uh, so how could I not know this message for 20 years? 
His first mess was about what? The kingdom of God. Exactly. You know, every parable is about the kingdom. Every prayer is about the kingdom. You know, so we have to understand that the kingdom of God is how Jesus did all this stuff. Ain't no use to us doing it right here, you know, trying to say, yeah, I, I can do this stuff. And Christ will always strengthen me. And, and I can do all this. And like, you're not going to do none of that stuff if you don't understand how the kingdom of God operates. Because that's what he used to do all that stuff. So we have to learn that system. That's why he told the disciples, you need to get this because I'm out of here. You need to learn this system because I'm teaching to you guys about the kingdom of God. So he rose, he rose from the grave and he started talking about the same thing that he talked from the beginning, in the middle, and even at the end. Even after he rose from the grave, he's still preaching the same message. Now, you guys would get tired of me if I had one message and all I talked about was one thing. But this is the only thing he talked about. Why? It was the most important thing. That's why he talked about it. It's the most important. Now, what do we preach? Christ and him crucified. You know, that's all I heard. I'm like, man, Christ, that's not, that's kind of morbid, ain't it? You introduce that to a person. Don't you know that Jesus Christ died for you? And, <laughs> and all those are true facts. But he played it off. He's like, I got to go somewhere, guys. I'll be back, though. I'll be back in a couple of days. Where you going, Jesus? Uh, you know, I must go away for a couple days. That's it. See, he, he's now blaming. We uplift it. And what he talked about forever, we don't say nothing about and we uplift that. Who did that? Satan. <laughs> Satan don't want you to talk about the kingdom. Why? Because he got one. A kingdom against a kingdom. That's all that's battling down here on earth. Mm -hmm. All the other religions, God ain't involved in none of them. God don't do religion. He don't do denominations. He's looking at who is doing kingdom activity. Who is using the, 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 the currency that we use in the kingdom? We use faith that comes from the heart. And what does faith say? Faith does not say, Jesus come down here and fix my problem. Or raise her from the bottom and say, Jesus come up and fix my problem. Hell, hell. He says, no. Faith says, I will say and decree. You know, believe, believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. That's how you're going to make things happen in the kingdom. You're going to do some decreeing yourself because you're a king. So you think you're king of. Once he was eating with, uh, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift. He promised. As I told you before. Now here he is telling them not to leave Jerusalem. Now he, he didn't came back, he didn't rose again, he didn't show his uh his nail pierced hands to some of them, so he validated who he was. He said, I'm alive, guys. You know, see, go ahead and handle me. Now remember, y'all got all these different stories in there, you know, different sceneries. And you kind of have to put them together because, you know, when he first came out of the grave, you know, the first person he met was some women, right? Some ladies. All right. So uh, and he told them, don't touch him. Because he had what? He had an ascendant. So would that be the second coming, third coming, fourth coming? <laughs> See, I'm going to make you think. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he hadn't ascended yet, right? So he had been up there and came back down again. All right? Because the Bible says he has, they have a same... Models of tabernacle, and he actually had emergency of death. He put the blood up, the perfect blood of the lamb that finally finished it all. No more sacrifice. That's why the veil was real. We don't need another earthly building now because it's done. We're done with buildings. You are now my most valuable building. You're going to walk around just like the priest. You're the priest, and you're actually toting the presence of God on your shoulders right now. And the government shall be on the shoulder. Guess where is that now? It's on yours. It's on yours. All right? Now watch this. He's concerned about this gift. John baptized. He says, John baptized you with water. But in just a few days, you can tell Jesus, uh, you know, he didn't think time. You know, he already thought it turned because he was up there for 40 days praying. <laughs> he said, few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now they prayed for 40 days. Why does Pastor always give you details? Because I'm trying to teach you guys about all things being equal. Because you guys won't pray at all and you're trying to get the same thing they got. <laughs> and I'm just saying, you, hey, that's where I was because nobody telling me anything. You're like, wait a minute. What was the difference? What do you mean? You, Peter came and he prayed and he, he Peter prayed on the day of Pentecost and he saved 3,000. Now you see how simplified they made that? Let's rip around the paper. <laughs> he was on his face for 40 days, <laughs> you know, wondering 
Where's this gift that Jesus talked about? Because he said in just a few days, and it was 40. So I, he's fighting the doubt in my heart that I would have had for a few days. Well, we've been here for 40 days up in this room. Locked. Locked room, by the way. Women sneaking them food because they was persecuting Jews at the time. You know, so looking for this Jesus who stole them. You know, so you got to understand. So I want you guys to stop being reading this book like a religious book and pay attention to what's going on. Because as soon as I went back and started talking to the Holy Spirit who actually wrote the book, he started giving me these so then he said, pay attention to the detail. Like, oh, I read it all the time. He knows it was 40 days and Jesus said a few. You know, those small little detail. I'm like, oh, okay. Because we try, to, uh, we, we try to idolize these guys like they weren't like human like us. I had attitude or, you know, we're tired and, and weary. And they're just like and scared and fearful. You know, they were. they just like you. So I want you to put yourself, find yourself in the Word. And show you how, even though they were that way, humans just like us, they still got the victory. But how did they do it? Well, I think five days on my face would do it. I think, I think, you know, my flesh would be kind of out of it by then. <laughs> you know, I think I'd be thinking real spiritual about a forty day. You know, and somebody says some stuff to you guys must be up there drunk, brother. I ain't drunk. I'm actually hungry. You know, <laughs> I'm up in forty days. <laughs> you know. I'll be bold as a lion too after 40 days on my face and in the presence of God, you know. But watch this. Remember before that, before he left and says, wait for the promise, he blew on them again. I'm trying to teach you guys because all that's the question because we already know you're supposed to get born again. Why about tithes? Fill up the spirit. Now all these people say, when did it happen with the disciples? And you see, most people don't understand. When did that happen? They're like, well, they must didn't do it. That automatically makes God a respecter of person. Right? Now we know, uh, like the believing thief on the cross, they had one. He didn't get water baptized, but he did believe. So no, we, we know he's saved. Some people come as through the fire. But you gotta understand the purpose of baptism. Alright, so you gotta understand what baptism is all about. So, so you, you're gonna find out when Jesus, well, first of all, Jesus blew all the Holy Spirit on them twice. Once when he said two by two. Go in the city, dust your feet, if they act crazy with you and all this kind of stuff. You know, and the Spirit came upon them. Then later on, you hear him, you hear him talking when he, they walk on the road, he goes his loins, and he started washing their feet. And that's when Peter started getting real religious with him and saying, Oh no, Master, you'll never wash my feet. And he says, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you can, you can have no part of me. That was, that was going to the baptized, because you get baptized in Christ, and you raise up. So there was, he washed their feet. He says, Your body. The rest of your body is already clean from the words that I've been speaking over you from day one. That's how you got saved in the first place. You heard the word. Somebody says, you must believe in it. You believe the word and you got saved. Well, he says, that's how they got it. He says, but now I need to wash your feet. They're going to go into the water baptism. They had a form of that in the Old Testament when they had that lever. You mean they had that lever, that bowl of water? It's the same stuff. Then when they had the mirrors, the mirror bowl. When they, the, the priests had to wash their hands and stuff, that was a form of the baptism because they was going to the next chamber and then the next chamber. You know, you're going to be water baptized, say, hold on, you know, the, the blood was the sacrifices. You saved by the blood, you know, water baptized. You remember the guy on Jesus about, what's wrong with your disciples? I used to think they was disciples, like nasty, like, do your disciples not wash their hands before they eat? And, I, you know, in our culture, you know, it's kind of strange. Like, what thing, man, y'all, y'all nasty, y'all germs, <laughs> you know? But then what they're talking about, they had a ceremony cleansing of washing their hands, and that symbolized back then like a water baptism, okay? So everything, remember that's what I showed you at the beginning, I say, I'm a God like no other, I show you what, the end from the, so you're always going to see a pattern. If you've seen it in new, you're going to see it in the old, all right? If not, it's an isolated incident, has nothing to do with you. But when it shows up in the new, in a different format, it has everything. It says that's just how the whole system works from Genesis to the end of the book of Maps. All right? And you need to pay attention to that because that's just God's system. That's how people got to call up and tie it. They understand it. In Genesis, they tied it before the law. They tied when they had the law. They tied it after the law. And in the end. Because that's just how a system works from beginning to the end. And that's where all of us. Now, some stuff fall off because we're different culture, different time. We don't need it. But don't get it twisted. 
That health program that God put on them and in the garden, we should be eating it if we want to live 120, all things being equal. You can't say I'm going to live 120 years and not do the diet that they had. Mm -hmm. And for you guys, y'all call it the Daniel fast. And the Daniel fast, you go back and look at Genesis, oh, that was God's regular food in the first place. Vegetables, you know, grains, <laughs> you know. That's all it was. Y'all call it Daniel fast. Daniel just went back and said, Lord, they want me to eat this, this contaminated meat of meat that's been worse. And God says, Pfft. Go tell them to let them eat the food that I told you in the beginning. <laughs> and that's all it was. And of course, we can make a religion out of all of it. We made a religion out of washing feet. Because we don't understand stuff. You know, it, it, Satan does it though. See, when I see Satan, I told you that when he, he takes stuff and he rotates it over and over, like, it's something about this. Every argument, we don't believe in speaking tongues. We don't believe in healing. We don't believe in. This stuff, I know I say Satan is wrong. It comes up too much. If it wasn't no big deal, it wouldn't be nothing. But since it goes against his kingdom, as I say it must be some power in everything he resists. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be. So I say that, that's why I start paying attention. Like, wait a minute. I mean, I don't kind of know. I don't know everything. I ain't no scholar. But the way y'all putting all this emphasis on it, it's something about this. <laughs> you know? Because Satan wouldn't care. He, he's going to resist anything that you're going to do damage to him, though. And you just can't be falling for everything. And I said, when I see a whole bunch of people walking one way, I walk the other. But anyway, John baptized with water. He says, but you will be baptized a couple of days. In a few days, it was actually 40 days later. Now watch this. Promises by the power, promise that God promised about power. Because I'm talking about power coming back to the kingdom. And God promised him the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit come upon you. I'm not going to read all that because we know these scriptures. Acts 1 and 8. For God had given us the spirit, not the spirit of fear, but of Power and love. Why are you going to need that love? Because what? Faith working by what? Love. That's why you're going to need that love there. And a sound mind. You're going to need a sound mind these last days because they're trying to make everybody commit suicide. Between all the hormone drugs, all the medication you're taking, all this stuff has psychotic stuff in it. I'm not telling you to be fearful. I'm telling you God to be vigilant for the days are evil. And, in, and this dark system is not for you now. So don't be caught up in what everybody's doing, you know. And now they're trying to get all this, all the different CBC and all these other kind of D's from marijuana and, and TMZ. It just don't get you high. <laughs> TMZ, like that. <laughs> I think that's one of those little social sh shows in it. <laughs> yeah, HDC, one of those things. Uh, this was good and this was bad. Oh, you can kind of, you can pull it from there, but not. And all it has, one thing is what everybody else, if God says, I knew what my competition would be in this world system would be mammon. That's all it is. Mammon always makes people hard goals away from God and towards mammon. That's what it is. It's all about money. Now watch this. Now unto him that is able to see the body above all things, we ask a thing according to the what? Where is this power? power at? The power is where? That's why Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. That's that power. Who brought the kingdom? The uh, kingdom of God. Jesus bring it back on the shoulders. Then he says, it's good that I walk away from here. I'll go away from here. That you can have the Holy Spirit in everybody at all times. And all the millions of people in one place. He don't know everybody's prayer. He don't answer everybody all prayer. He don't know every language. That's why it's so good that I leave here. All right? God, Jesus could not do that. Everybody I was talking about, if I had one moment with Jesus, what would you do? All right? And you know what Jesus probably said? Because he's probably witty like me. He gave my wit. He says, you wouldn't do anything with it because I gave you the Holy Spirit who's just like me at counseling. And he, you don't say anything to him anyway. You ignore him. <laughs> so what makes you think? You didn't ask him no questions. How do you think pastor get all these revelations? I talk to the Holy Spirit. Show me how this goes together. I've been knowing this stuff for years. I know scripture. But you need to show me how it goes. And I like it from the Old Testament to the New, please. Because you, you wrote this. When it makes sense why I'll ever find myself painted in the corner again. And then, you know what, guys? <laughs> you know, I thought, <laughs> you know, I don't want that no more. I, I'm going to tell you, God probably working on me about, look, you, you almost get paranoid about being religious again and being lost. I was lost. I'm telling you, man, I tried to destroy my life because I was exposed to religion still the kingdom. I didn't care what I did. I, I was hopeless. I'm like, what? Because nobody told me, I'm like, man, this is this stuff don't work. I'm like, how many choirs do I have to sing in? How many churches I have to go to? How many I got to work in? And I'm still in the same boat, you know? 
So I hate religion, and I'm going to make sure that God says whatever he delivers you from, that's what he goes and make you go and deliver other people from. If you want to heal somebody, he's going to heal you. All right? Well, I'm delivered from religion. Hardcore. <laughs> and I can see it, smell it a mile away. And I can't stand it because it has nothing to do with God. As soon as you start saying, you're all passionate about something, like, I'm trying to figure out, well, how did, well, how did, what they got to do with, and, but that has nothing to do with God. <laughs> you know, nothing. We're wasting energy and time and resources. Satan is trapping you in there and gets you all passionate, mad, arguing with people. Like, they don't have nothing to do with God anyway. It's okay. You know, God into that. Now watch this. You know that the Holy Spirit, here's a symbol. I might want to take a picture of that. Because in this series, we're doing a spirit series on the Holy Spirit. Um, we're going to be talking about every one of those in detail. Why, why not? We might get, we will get to the dove tonight. Why the dove and not the eagle? Because we worship the eagle in America. Why the dove? <laughs> All right. So, God, watch this. God, the Holy Spirit, cannot be replaced. That's what they did with religion. Religion replaces the Holy Spirit. How did they do it? The Bible, our manual for life, is a spiritual book. Spiritual book of what? Books. So, it's a, it's a, so the Bible is called the book of books because it has 66 books in it. The Bible, right? So therefore, it's our man. We call it our manual for life because that's exactly what it is. The manufacturer has given you what you find in the manual. First thing you can find is you're going to have a description of what the product can do. You're going to have warranties. You're going to have laws that govern the principal operation. Guarantees that if you operate the product this way that you will get the right result. And you got a lot of warning, warning, warnings <laughs> inside the manual. Also, remind you, if you do misuse this product, it will not function. And he says, last call, if you cannot, if it breaks so bad, do not attempt to fix it yourself. <laughs> Return it back to what? Yeah, I call, I call back to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Do not try to fix yourself. Won't work. I'm good. Okay, see you in 10 more years. <laughs> Because you, you ain't going to fix yourself. <laughs> you need Jesus every day, as they say in the streets. <laughs> All right? Now, watch this. This book was written by the Holy Spirit, and it is discerned by the Holy Spirit. This is where I had to walk away from some of, some of the people I used to hang around. I got a lot of people going to tell me about the Bible. The Bible said this and this like that. Ain't been more filled. You know? <laughs> you know, it's discerned by the Holy Spirit. You got a lot of logos. And when you do logos only, all you're going to do is paint yourself in the corner. You ain't going to know what to do. You're going to be like the Pharisees. They had all the logos. Jesus says you keep it the law. Or you keep it the logos. They had no discernment because they didn't have the spirit. All right? The spirit is one of the same. He wrote it. He's going to tell you. And God even tells you in hard car logos. He says, now guys, look. All word is from me. Check. Uh, is not rightly divided. Check. Make sure you rightly divide it. Check. See what I'm saying? This is the stuff that you got from the beginning. This is regular instructions in, in righteousness. That's what I said. I went to the instruction part of the Bible. God says all word is written for this, this, inspiration, and all this stuff. And I found this one word that just popped out of me. And it said instruction in righteousness. I'm like, why is that word sticking out to me? He said, that's you. That's going to be your ministry. You're going to be in instructions in righteousness. Righteousness is the right way the king wants you to do it. So I'm all about instructions. I'm, everybody else got other stuff to do. They're supposed to. They call. Now listen to all of them. But to me, when you come to me, you're going to get all you get. You're going to make sure you get an understanding. What's going to be your principal thing upon this earth? You're not going to be in the spiritual cloud and start floating around. Ooh, well, I just feel the thing. Oh, well, you keep, you stay right there. I'm going to go ahead and find what the instruction manual say about what to do about this situation. You know, and then you start seeing, you, you get some results. Because Satan loves for you to do that. He knows how the kingdom of God works. He's, he's, on, he's leaning on the throne of the kingdom of God. <laughs> that's why he's going to throw you everything that's totally opposite. The spirit of the Antichrist is always opposite of the Christ. You should think it would be simple. But yet people are falling for everything. God tell what? Men says, men, do not wear women clothes. And ladies, do not wear men clothes. Uh -huh. What are we doing today? <laughs> Why? Because it's the spirit of the Antichrist. 
It's real simple to figure out, and I keep telling you, when you see the kingdom of darkness and it's popular, you need to start tiptoeing. Let's come on over here. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they never line up. Yeah, remember I told you that last week? God says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. So they never line up with him. Never. And, and I guess some people are in the call themselves spiritual and believe, man, he... I know you all in the God stuff, man. Come on, man. This right here got to be that. I said, let's do the test. Is it popular? Well, you heard me. You can forget. <laughs> they would never line up with God. Satan going to make sure. It's called the kingdom of darkness for a reason. It's not the kingdom of maybe. Sometimes he is dark. All the time. You know, and God says, what does what? Light and heaven. Come on, why do you think he's telling you that? It never. I'm trying to keep you from being deceived. Like I once was. This is how you stay away from it. I say just use the basic stuff that the Father already told you. You know, there's a spirit after Christ out there. I mean, there's a Christ. You know, he's going to go in against everything that I say. If it's popular, broad way, my way, narrow way. When they start calling you narrow minded, he's like, yes, 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 I'm there. Yeah, his way is narrow minded. You know, oh man, you so you yeah, never mind, man. I kind of keep an open mind, like not me. God says, "Set the guard over my eyes, my ears." I don't keep my mind open for attack for everything. Put the hammer of salvation over there about righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness on you. You ain't battle. You sit there, open yourself, trying to call your trying to please them and be open. And I'm being cool. I ain't got time to be a cool. I definitely got time to be a fool. You know, because this is a real warfare. Satan, right? Satan, look, he ain't trying to tickle your feet. He's trying to what? <laughs> Kill, steal, and destroy you. And all he want to do is get you hooked on the one thing that's going to take you out. He's very subtle. He comes an angel of light. He's not going to like, well, I can't get him hard, hard up front because he'll figure it out. So I'm just going to let him simply, let he, he, ha, ha, little flirtation, all this kind of stuff. Look at this, little, that. It's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of this, a little bit. Come on. It can't be that bad, man. That stuff is going to get you. Your spirit's going to be streaming if you let it. It's going to be streaming every time. You know you should be. And you know it should be. And you know you need to go home. You, you need to do it. You need to do it. And it did this part. It's gentle. <laughs> it's just going to tell you. It's not going to yell. It's going to put you in a headlock. And Because when you go before God and it fall apart. Because it says that when sin comes to full fruition, it causes death. And your finances your marriages, your health, and you go back to God, what are you going to say? God gave me a land, this is what happened to me. And he's going to say, gonna roll the tape. Uh, angels roll the tape. He's going to download right in your head like, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember. Yes. And, and so and so, yeah. Yep. He always make a way for what? And escape. Always. Always. So we just got to make up our mind like I did. I divorced myself from the system. I divorced myself from the world system and worldly people, you know, and realized, like, I'm going one, I'm gonna keep it 100 with God. And that's all it was. Once I had no more attachment, they couldn't entice me back. It's easy. Now, even though I'm still walking in the world, and I might slip up or something, but it's not as easy once you have a made-up mind. And that's what I did. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with that. Never again. Because it almost destroyed me the first time. Religion, watch this, the book was written and says to be spiritually discerned. Religion tries to replace the Holy Spirit and power with charisma, talent, and human skill. That's why I told you to see some, some churches, man, they can bring motivational speakers. Secondly, people who care about God in the front of God's people. I take my job very seriously. These are God's sheep. These are God's people. I can't expose them to anything. People got different type of spirits on them. You can't just do that. Watch this. So, yeah, they try to replace the power because since we have no power and we don't believe in power no more, not us, some people, they bring out charisma, talent, singing and dancing, Snoop Dogg, everybody else in there be hiding, hiding out, you know, and they thinking that's because we, we got no power anyway, so we might as well entertain our flesh. Human skill. So we don't, not of God. Let me say it on the record. Not of God. <laughs> okay? It has nothing to do with the kingdom. Watch this, the God, the Holy Spirit, grieving, watch this. We're going to talk about the God, the Holy Spirit. What's the difference between grieving the Holy Spirit, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, quenching the Spirit? I figured I'd share that with you guys tonight because I, uh, 
I never knew. <laughs> I used to get it all confused <laughs> back in the day. So I'm like, you know what? I wanted to come here tonight and actually just start talking to you about the three different, uh, the difference between uh, infilling, baptized, and baptized with fire. And as I was doing my study, the Holy Spirit is saying, why are you going to tell them about what I do when they don't even know who I am being? Mm. So I'm like, huh. Oh. So I had to bag it up <laughs> and say, you know, I'm going to have to spend some time with the Holy Spirit, breaking him down for when he does that stuff, y'all know who did it, you know, versus me just going to the fruit like most people do. Now watch this. Ephesians 4, 30 says this, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, first of all, that's a loaded scripture and one of my best ones ever that I use for defense about people talking about you say the law, you say the law, you say the law. I don't believe in that whatsoever. I believe just like an American citizen. You know, if I was to rob a bank as an American citizen, they won't take my citizenship away. You know, if I commit mass murder, they won't take my citizenship away. Well, what will they do? Do my buddy take jail, right? right? Well, that's the same system God has. Where you think they got it from? All right. You don't lose your citizenship for bad acting. All right, so that's that's what they, most people try to teach you a long time ago, and that's what a lot of people they went to forest stream and says by grace you can do anything. You can, and just like an American citizen, you can do anything. You can go cause mass murder, you can rob banks, but when they catch you, they are gonna throw you into jail, and you might go to the electric chair and some of the stuff you do. So yeah, go ahead and do it. You know, so that's what Galatians four start talking about and warn you those who continue doing such things like this. First Corinthians said the same thing, warn you. I have warned you before, those who continue doing this and this and this, and then he tells you the outcome of your life. You not you won't you all the privileges that they talk about the kingdom of God you're supposed to receive by being a kingdom citizen, he says, that's not for you. You won't be getting that. All right? That's that God's always gonna reward those who do just seek him. He's gonna reward those who do good, just like they do in the American citizens do. You know, you you have a privilege to drive, it's a privilege to ride on the roads. You get too many tickets, they'll take their privilege away. <laughs> okay, take your license. You know, you get a DUI, especially now wrong way driving here in Arizona. Don't know what this is all about. I know it's demonic because it's killing people. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's what all my lipid says. Did it kill somebody? Did it destroy something? Say, okay, <laughs> real quick, get your little lipid space. It's simple to me now. I ain't got no complicated life. I got the kingdom of God life. The way, the truth, and the kingdom of God life. So that's why I look at the world now. And my life is simple. Yeah, I get it. Watch this. So greed, what does greed mean? It says greed has to do with our bad character. This is how you greed. Because remember, you're toting the Holy Spirit around in you. So when you got a bad character, you agree with him. Because he's sitting there watching you do all that stuff. You know, he's like, he, he has to do with our bad character. Uh, sadness, causes, it causes him sadness. It causes him pain. It causes him hurt. So he... See, he, he's a he. See, he, he's a person. See, and you're hurting him. <clears throat> you grieve him. How you do it? Lying, anger, wrath, definitely unforgiveness. You know, this is how you cause the Holy Spirit to grieve. God's, and what the, what the scriptures say? Ephesians 4, 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I just gave you a couple examples. Other ways you grieve him. But just a couple examples to put you in the, the ballpark about how you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to be having this stuff and making them hurt, pain. He has all the attributes of the Godhead. Watch this. Mark 3.28 says this. But anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Oh, that's one of the hardest statements in the book. This is a sin with eternal consequences. Eternal consequences. You know, in Genesis, the Bible says in the beginning, God made Adam. And then another verse says he made a male and female. But there's still nobody but Adam. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is where you can see, you know, the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. It's part of the Trinity. When you start talking about his attributes, you'll see that his attributes pick up more of the other side of the female. Sensitive, you know, hurt, all this kind of stuff. He picks it up, even though he's a he. But remember, I told you Adam had both things in him and God split them up and put them in a physiological body, you know, male and female bodies. But remember the other side of the brain when we did this study showing what the brains work for the woman and the man normally have? Well, the Holy Spirit has that. He's where you think he got it from. 
He's part of the Godhead too. He helped create us. So now you can see where why the women know how to get in their God's presence better. Uh, they, 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 get, they get the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Even that old hymn that's like, he walks with me and he talks with me and he calls me on and me. I'm like, wait a minute, hold Hold on, I ain't walk with the dude like that now. <laughs> you know, we thinking we can't wrap our brain that way, but women can get into that side. Now, now hear me straight on record, he's still a he. I just said you can see where that, that side of the spirit of the God part of him comes from, from the, like the female. So he's still a he. So let me put that on record because he says he, he, he throughout the whole thing. Uh, blaspheme. What does blaspheme mean? Okay, well, what do you do? How do you blaspheme the spirit? To give credit to the devil what the Holy Spirit has done. That's how you blaspheme. To give credit to the devil what the Holy Spirit has done. And you've seen the example of that when Jesus uh, was doing all the healing and the, the religious people got mad at him because mm -hmm. he was showing power and they said, oh, he is casting out demons by the spirit of Beelzebub. And he was using the Holy Ghost. And that's what he says, that's crazy. A kingdom that goes against his own kingdom is not productive. Right. But at least he didn't sit in religion. He knew a kingdom against him. Yeah. Kingdom of dark, kingdom of light, that's about it. But he says, yeah, if, if kingdom of light is going against the kingdom of light, he says, that's not productive. Basically, that's what he's saying. So that's what blaspheme means when you try to give credit. They're more blaspheming than they call Jesus blaspheming. He's more right than they were because they reverse it. They want to blaspheme. Mm -hmm. And they're accusing them of it. Mm -hmm. Like we said, what the Bible say? Lest you fall in what? The same what? Temptation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch you, you judge, lest you fall the same temptation. It's all there, guys. Uh, 1 Thessalonians five nineteen says this. Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? You ever heard of how do you quench a fire? You extinguish it, right? Yeah. Throw some water. Uh, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do some things. I'm not getting no examples of the flow of none of this. Uh, how do you quench you get in the flow with the Holy Spirit? I mean, my wife should be like this. Because we, we, we were also always in praise and worship, so we understood when the Spirit took over some things. And, um, and, and, and you can quench the Spirit by shutting down praise and worship just to get to your word. That's how you quench it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit moves in one direction. You might have one, uh, you might be doing one thing, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, hey, I, I, I want to work this. I got something I want to do. And you're too busy worried about getting through your program or the clock, which really clicks, which really quenches the spirit in, in America. Because everybody's all about the clock here. Only when it comes to things of God. Amen. <laughs> when, it, when it ain't got, it's all God, we watch the clock. If it ain't got nothing to God, oh, we can stay here forever. <laughs> you know, ball games, movies. You know, <laughs> I just heard that the movie that me and my wife was because I'm a movie buff go see the Avengers. It's three hours long. <laughs> she coming for the popcorn. Praise <laughs> God. I give her two bags for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point is, ain't nobody said, hmm, I ain't going to move for no three hours. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Okay, we got exception to the rule. <laughs> exception to the rule. All right, but that's not the rule. <laughs> it's an exception. But yeah, most people don't do that when it comes to them getting on party and doing some stuff borderline ungodly. Ain't nobody watching the clock. As soon as I run on five minutes here, though, I'm gonna switch. Be <laughs> ready to go. I'm like, see, and, and that, and I'm just bringing it up and not trying to tell you guys I would be disorderly or run over time all the time. It should not be the norm, but here once in a while, it might happen. The whole point I'm trying to show you that that's how the Holy Spirit get quenched. You know, you need, you need to sit there. If it's in worship, sit there. You're like, oh, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah, but the Spirit's moving. That's the whole point of doing it. To get the Spirit to come here and do what He need to do. Somebody getting a breakthrough. And the Father they so fast, my wife is good at that because y'all go deep. You know, and, and y'all 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 do y'all thing, and I'll see y'all y'all see we got a lesson plan, and they they whatever they stop, and somebody bring up a question, and they start ministering, it's over. Pack the book up, and they just whoop. That's how you don't quench the spirit. You don't worry about oh man, I studied all night, and I gotta get no, no. I'm giving you a great example of how we quench 
the spirit. Why? Because we keep saying, I want to see miracles. I want to see that. Man, please. <laughs> what are you trying to do this all things being equal? <laughs> You'd be like, what? We, we're horrible. We, we just, we're just not doing the manual. Me included sometimes. I ain't taking myself out of that, but I'm learning. I'm learning much more. And I want, I want to teach you, you guys, and all the people to catch on to this. We, we, we really want to see Jesus. He got, He said, you got to do great works, greater than me. I believe all that stuff. But now I get it. A lot of people are like, that stuff don't work. I don't believe that happens for the day. But, and then I realized, let me see, did you do A through Z? Was you like 40 days on your face like Peter? Were you? No. No. But you talking. <laughs> you know, you didn't do none of it. But you, you talking, tell me I don't believe in that. First, you got to at least do it the right way, the righteous line yourself, the king way, and then which I know won't work because that's how I got me trapped in the first place back to the Lord. Thank God for the good trap because I said I'm going to do this stuff 110%. It ain't going to work and then God's going to get out of my head and leave me alone. And I went all in with God. And guess what? It, it kicked in. <laughs> and here I am tonight Thank you, Lord. doing something that I thought I'd never do because I ain't want to hit up on a reverend. Don't call me no pastor, no nothing. I just want to take me, me and my wife and take my family. <laughs> you know. And next thing I'm like, no, nah, bro. You didn't know what I just delivered you from? You know how many people going to fall in that trap if you don't go out there and start teaching that? <laughs> you know, they don't know nothing about the kingdom either. I'm like, hey, hey, I don't know about all that now. <laughs> but I went for it. And God, I just said, God be God now. God the Holy Spirit. We're doing a God the Holy Spirit series. So we're going to take our time. I'm not going to rush it. Wherever we stop, we stop. But we're going to really take it. And here's the things I'm putting up, I'm getting up front. I'm going to show you the end from the beginning. Let me slow down. I'm going to show you the end from the beginning like our father. Because that way, you know, I said, look, guys, throughout this series, here's the things that we're going to cover. Here's one thing we're going we're gonna to cover, God, the Holy Spirit, who he is, what he does. We're going to study his nature. All this is all teachings. Everything needs to be taught. Watch this. We're going to study his purpose. Why? You know, here, that's our main thing. We teach the whys. What's it for? You know, I know it said what and who, but why? We're going to study the purpose. We're going to study also... His voice. How to recognize his voices versus yours and all the other voices out there, including thyself. All right? We're going to study his work. What is, what is he supposed to do? He's like, Jesus was down here bragging about what, uh, what him and the Father did. He said, I work and the Father work. Well, what does the Holy Spirit work look like? So, so we're going to see what the Holy Spirit, Spirit fruit of his work look like because you're supposed to have the fruit of your labor. All right? The next we're going to study is uh, praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues. Some people don't understand that stuff. That we don't believe in all that. We don't care what you don't believe. We're going to, we're just going to do the word. If the word says you're supposed to do something, we're going to do it. You know, all right. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And then we're going to um, pray in the spirit because believe it or not, people always tell me, "Yeah, I put the whole arm to God." That's right, brother. Ephesians, you know, put the breastplate on and the helmet. And you know what the last piece is? Praying in the spirit. Always. <laughs> How you pray in the spirit? Speaking in tongues. All right. Uh, religious self. Don't get me started. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, next thing you know, we're gonna study the difference between being filled with the spirit, being baptized with the spirit, and as they say, being baptized by fire. You gotta know the distinction and what's the purpose of each one. And all you're getting, make sure you get understanding. It's like I said, who cares if Batman got all the tools in his utility belt? And he's like, Alfred, what is this? I don't even know what this is for. See, it, it's useless. And it's basically the same thing that the Pharisee was going through when Jesus showed up. He says, you have all the keys, but you don't know where they go. You have all the keys. And people be boasting about, yeah, I got this key, and I got this key. Who cares if you don't know where it goes? You know what's the name of the Avengers movie? And I'm going to do a series on it called, it's called what? Endgame. God has a endgame. Everything you do has a endgame. <laughs> you know? I only go into stuff because I'm already, I'm not, I'm God like no other because I show you what the endgame before the beginning. <laughs> Everything you do. So I'm going to be talking about, I pray like this, that, that. i like, why? You see, and I read it like, why? You, you, you're law, you're gonna be religious, and you're gonna be religious not, and you're gonna get no results, and nobody gonna be attracted to your life, because you're not gonna be realistic, you're gonna know how to function in this world or the other one to come. 
Because she's not supposed to be that way. Jesus sent around and he called him a wine bearer. Why? Because he turned up? No! Because he was hanging around people that can relate to him who was worldly, but yet they accepted him and he accepted them, and yet without changing his character. That's your challenge because the sheriff tried to tell him, I'm just going out there, man. You know, you, you got to be out there. How are they going to see Jews? going to see me. They're not saying Jesus. You acted just like them. they saying themselves as a reflection. <laughs> you know? So that's going to be your challenge. You can't go out there unless you got yourself together. You hang around some of your circle of friends, they're going to pull you back into that music, they dance, they style, they, you cussing, you got residue on you, you thinking about another woman, another man, you hang around the wrong person. You got to get real. You know, you got to be truthful that makes you free. And uh, I'm only telling you the same stuff that I read in the Bible. God says, be vigilant. There's evil. Sit the God. Open your eyes and ears. You know, people try to pretend like, man, oh, y'all, 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 dude, I'm doing the word. I know you're going to be mad. Because nobody don't do the word. That's the first thing. God, I was going to God. How come the church is not powerful? And how come we don't see no miracles like back in the day? And you're like, go, 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 go read. Go, go read. Before you start calling me out, they ain't doing it. They ain't even doing the manual. I'm like, man, I thought for sure. Oh, come on now. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, but come, come you mean that? Nope. Not doing it. All things being equal. We, we got to just do it before I can go back whining and crying to daddy. I can't go back to him. He's like, you didn't do what I told you to do. He said, seek the kingdom of God and my righteousness. How does the king say it's supposed to work and operate? Line yourself up with the king. Use my system, not the world system. We got people calling themselves being righteous. I'm like, I'm lying with Jesus. I'm the will of God. And you using the world system? <laughs> Reverse it. Okay, now I'm trying to use the kingdom of God and not be in line with the king. See how we always one side or another? We never can just get that. One extreme and another. We we going to hell for everything we're doing, or we grace we can do everything we want. Yeah. You're both lost. The blind leading the blind, you ending up in a ditch. <laughs> Ain't nobody going nowhere. Let me stop. Praise I'm missing. Let me stop. <laughs> I'm fussing. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. <laughs> All right, we're going to find out with this series when we're talking about the, the God, the Holy Spirit, and His gifts. He has gifts. Now, first of all, they know you're not people. You they know I get these religious people because I understand. You remember Jesus said, we'll wait for the gift. Yes. Even though, and once they get that gift, that you gift got some more gifts. All right? So we understand the greatest gift you got was the gift Himself, the Holy Spirit. All right, so we're not going to get all crazy with that. We understand that part, but he also has some gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit versus the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. You know, so, you know, he said the gifts of the Spirit, he has his own. All right, the Holy Spirit has many names. Um, we're going to run just real quick. He's a witness. He's a teacher. He's a guider. He's an administrator. He's the breath of God. I like that one. The roca. Uh, he's a counselor. He's a comforter. He's a helper. And he's the standby. <clears throat> you ever put your uh, uh, equipment on standby? It's on standby power. See? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what it says. What, what do you mean on standby? Well, it got power, but it's just sitting there reserved, waiting for when I need it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> standby. <laughs> he's a standby. I love it. Everybody put you that? All right. Keep that for your notes, study it, meditate on it. Next, the Holy Spirit is not. He is not. <laughs> Time is winding down. Let's go. He is not the force. Luke, use the force. No, he's not the force. Faith has a force, but the Holy Spirit is not the force. Now watch this. He's not emotional. He's not just an emotion in your head. And he's not just a thought. Because, you know, we have some crazy thoughts. Matter of fact, God says, cast some of them thoughts down and make sure that thought don't go against the word of God. So it's not he's just a thought. Uh, he's not a thing. And he's definitely not a dove. You know, if we was to make the whole spirit, he'll be an eagle because we celebrate the eagle here in America, right? We're crazy about that eagle. You know, even though he's a supreme being uh, in the air, but, but he's a created being. All right. He is, though, a person. He has a will. He has emotions. 
He's the third person of the Godhead. That's what most people think. You think it's an it thing and all this kind of stuff. No, he's a God. He's a person. Part of the Trinity. When he said, let us make man, he was a part of it. In our image, let us. Uh, he's a spirit of holiness. His name determines his nature. That's why we call him the Holy Ghost. All right? So, yeah, so his name and his nature are the same. He is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Because his name depicts his nature. He's holy. He's separated. He's pure. See, he's, he's set aside for God. Watch this. This is what you are. This is what makes you. Or what, see, when he comes inside you, this is what he makes you. He is an administrator of the kingdom of God. That's what you are. That's why you are. He filled with him. He's the administrator of the kingdom of God. Your job is to distribute the kingdom of God. Everywhere you tread your feet, you're going to distribute the kingdom of God to action. Attitude, energy, force, power. You're going to be walking around like Jesus did, administrating the kingdom of God. That's why he says, I'm sending another one just like me. You know, and that's what Jesus did. He was administrator of the kingdom of God when he's down here. He's like, watch this. Bam. Jesus, look what you just did. He says, let him know. Let him know that the kingdom of God just came to him. You know, I do this. Bam. Let him know that the kingdom of God just happened. She's administrator of the kingdom of God. That's what you are now. All right, watch this. God, he's God on the earth in the now. God on the earth now. Not pie in the sky when you die. He's now. Watch this. He has the same attributes as God. Omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. See, you see why, that's why I say, I told you a couple of weeks ago, like, you need to get a better relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. You're going to have to get to know him. All right, because most people say, oh, I wish I was in the days of Jesus. You basically got to know. He said, like, you got another one with you, and you ain't doing nothing with it. You, you see, people don't get the attitude. They, they don't understand how God thinks. God says, you're faithful with a few things. I make you really much. They don't understand that. They think, like, oh, that's just because right now it's just this. Y'all know when I'm preaching here, I preach like I got a thousand people sitting up in here. I'm not waiting for the thousand. I'm being faithful. I <laughs> do what I'm called to do. And I ain't going to preach no different, <laughs> you know. Same, same passion thing. So, therefore, you got to learn how this is where they are. We got to learn this system. We talked about the grieving of the Holy Spirit. I want to go. I ain't going to be able to get through all of it, but we'll stop when we get ready. All right, we'll stop. I got five more minutes. I got, I got five more minutes. <laughs> like, like I said, why a dove? That's the question we're going to talk about. Why a dove? I'm going to real quick. Why a dove? Let's see. Then John testified. This is John 1, 32 and 33. John testified and said, I saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove from heaven and rest on him. <laughs> All right. John says, I, this is John the Baptist saying, I saw this myself. He gave this testimony. He testified. <clears throat> I didn't know he was the one. It's John said, I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is, is the one who will baptize the Holy Spirit. He's talking about Jesus. And I, oh, you get that? No, I just missed it. Okay. <laughs> My bad. The one. He's talking about the one. Jesus is the one. He says, when you see this, the, the, the Holy Spirit descend down. He didn't say when you see the dove. He says, when you see the Holy Spirit descend down. And he says, I've seen him descend down like a dove. We'll get that later on. Mark 1 through 9. Uh, Mark chapter 1, 9 and 10 says, One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John the Baptist uh, baptize him in the Jordan. So we're bagging up in a different scripture. And it says, And Jesus came out of the water, and he saw the heavens split and open. Whoa! <laughs> and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. He's not a dove. Like it, though. Watch this. Why a dove? I asked you that earlier. Why a dove? Not the eagle. Not a raven. Like most dark movies put, they put the raven. And you've got pawn for it. Deadly stuff. Not a buzzard. But why a dove? Not the eagle. Because that's, you know, that's the spring being in the air. Dove is a very, very sensitive bird. It's the bird of peace. People always see it, right? Watch this. Dove represents the nature of the Holy Spirit. He's meek. That's the way the Holy Spirit is. Once, watch this. When you get ready to watch a, you ever watch a dove take off? Just like that. He can take off. Most of the eagle, you can tell when they about to take off. They start <laughs> they, they go, right? But when the ball get ready to do it, 
gone. Pew! Just like that. Slight. So that's what the Holy Spirit will do. It's just as quick as he came in and sent it like that. He can be gone. That's why I tell you, you got to learn when you in, know when you're in the flesh and know when you're in the spirit. All right, Genesis 8, 7 and 9 says this. And released the raven. This is Noah in the boat now. Noah's on the ark. He said he released a raven. The bird flew back and forth. He released a raven. Now the flood waters is after the flood has stopped raining, trying to find out some dry ground. He released a raven until the fl uh, flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had rescinded and he could find a dry ground. But the dove found no place to rest the sole of her foot. What kind of strange talk is that for him to write that? He says, but the dove had no place to rest the sole of her foot. Why have you heard that before? You remember Jesus in the Mount two by two? We heard this kind of statement before. He says, wherever you go, you gonna be bring the shalom. He says, peace be with you. You gonna send the dove out. And if that dove is not received, he's gonna come back. He said, and then return unto him and to the ark. So the boy, so he's like, man, I'm gonna peace in here. I'm like, peace be unto you guys. He, what haters? All this kind of stuff. Gotta go. And he took her and pulled her back unto him. That's what happens when you come bringing the dove. You have the dove of peace. That's what the Holy Spirit is. And when you go and say, Shalom, my brother, and it's not received, you're supposed to come in here and pull it right back. And he tell you what? To dust your feet. This is where you see the stuff. I told you, if you see it in the new, you're going to see it in the old. All right? So God, God, I tell you, our Father is so awesome. He didn't leave you hanging. Watch this. <clears throat> Let's go for the 812 real quick. He says, Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove. And she did not return to him anymore. Same thing with you. When you're ministering from the Holy Spirit, which has the dove, you know, nature, and you know, when you send it out and you finally found a resting place, ah, and now you're in the groove. You're ministering. You're doing your thing. In the groove, see? Uh, that's what happened with the dove. It went out and found a place. See, that's why it says you can grieve the Holy Spirit. It can be rejected. It can be blasphemed. See what I'm saying? This is how you know the Holy Spirit. You, you, you tote in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That dove is basically on your shoulder. And you basically supposed to be ministering it out. All right, so you, it'll return back to you. If it, it won't return back to you if you found a resting place. The resting place for the Holy Spirit is surrender. This is how you find the right spot. It's people who surrender. When we're worshiping, somebody who wants to eyes through and to totally surrender heart and everything, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is going to say, Ooh, a resting place, a place of surrender. Fear of God. I fear God too much to play around with him. God and his word are one to me and nothing else. You know, so I don't play around with the word. You play around with the word, you play around with God. See what I'm saying? So that's to call the fear of the Lord. All right? Atmosphere of hosting the dove. You create an atmosphere for you to host the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you can't do that, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit won't stay. He'll just like, Woof. see, now you understand now <clears throat> that even though you have the Holy Spirit on you and God says, stir up the gift within you, you can get the Holy Spirit, stir up the gift inside you for the Holy Spirit to come in up on you to do a work for the time period mm -hmm. and then go right back into the tabernacle of the house. All right, so that's how it works with you. You're always talking around, but he's not always manifesting himself because you haven't given though you haven't created an atmosphere for him. You haven't totally surrendered to him. You haven't, you know, either you haven't done it or the place you're trying to get him out into. That's why people say as Jesus went out, he can do no great, no work, great work to the what? Because the dove had no place to what? Man, his feet. That's how the Holy Spirit operates and works. All right, I'm going to tell you, you want to be a carrier of the power of God. You want to be the carrier of the power of God. This is why I can allow you to just be resting in just your state only. Because everybody knows you already have, you got the Holy Spirit inside you. Uh, you are an American citizen. They call you a Christian. Whatever. And, but 
But at the same time, like, yeah, but we want the manifested one. We want the one that brings glory. We want the one that brings power and demonstration. That's the one we're looking for. If you're just going to sit there, you know, you're not going to do the world no good. You ain't going to bring God no glory. And nobody can see nothing different from you and the people who have not accepted Jesus. You don't want that. You want the power of God in your life. So you got to understand how this works. So this is, you want to be a carrier of the power. All right? And all of you have the power, you must start releasing the dove. You got to release it. The Holy Spirit is not for you. It's, it, it goes out to do work. So if you ain't praying for nobody, you ain't, you know, interceding, you ain't laying hands on nobody, you're not trying to, you know, help nobody out, you're not going to be, you know, a carrier of the power. <clears throat> you're just going to have time that keeps you alive when Jesus is going to yank you out of here. You know, yeah, the Holy Ghost is for work. And the field, when you see the field part, and the baptized, and the Holy Ghost and fire, all that stuff has three different re meanings, three different purposes, you know, everything has a reason. You want, now watch this, I'm going to end it with this, because <clears throat> we're releasing the dove. When we pray for people, <clears throat> we don't pray like you're religious now. You have to decree and declare whatever you want to happen. They got cancer, cancer, die. That's the way you need to pray. I'm praying for you. Lord, and we know, we know that you, that by stripes you, you healed us. You're quoting facts. You haven't invoked the dove. You haven't used your decree power. What would you, just like Jesus asked, what would you like to see? Still around my right hand. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth, we know you're a great power. Like, what do you want? <laughs> and so that's what you got to do. Like, what do you want to see? You know, uh, I got a bad boss. Correct it. No, I'm praying for your boss, man. I'm praying for your boss. Just since religious jargon. And that's why it don't work. And people are like, yeah, this stuff don't work. That's where I was. I'm talking about myself. Didn't know no better. Because they was not talking kingdom. That's why they look at Jesus like, this guy speaks as if he has authority. <laughs> because he was talking about the kingdom. A king has authority. That's what the scepter's for. The crown is for power. The scepter's is for authority. And, and the censor is for influence. I'm closing. <laughs> I praise God. I think we got enough. Give God a hand clap for that. Because I know he is doing some great things in life. Albert, you get to close the prayer tonight because I'm going to be obedient. Oh, yeah. Bring it. Release the dove. <laughs> Release the dove. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this night, God. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we have something to look forward to, Lord, that we get to come and we get to, get to experience you, Holy Spirit, and um, that we each get a word from you. I know that um, every week that we come, Lord, we get to have that expectation and we're never let down, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that the rest of this week, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to work in us and through us, that your word would not just stay hidden in our heart, God, but that we would actually obey it, Lord, that we would be doers of the word, Lord, and that we would continue to do your good works, Lord, that throughout our busy day, Father, we would find ways to minister to those who need it, Father. Holy Spirit, guide us in those areas. I pray that you would continue to protect um, Pastor's anointing, Lord, and that he would continue to pour out onto us as we go out into this world, Lord, and just shine your light, Father. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. God is good. Well, guys, thanks a lot.